the revolution brought radical changes also to the social life of the people. A rural development campaign based largely on student-teacher volunteers and backed by the slogan, if you know, teach, if you don't know, learn, was one of its major achievements. Never before had city and country dwellers made contact in such a way. This unprecedented drive against illiteracy bridged the social gap of centuries, bringing mutual understanding and a sense of common purpose to the far-flung peoples of the nation. The rural development campaign had a second purpose besides, the teaching of health and basic hygiene. Nothing remotely like it had ever been tried before. For the first time in their history, the Somali peoples were brought together as a whole, not as rival clans or factions, but as a nation, eager from these small beginnings with the reading and writing of their mother tongue to grow and prosper for the common good. Doctors and teachers together, no matter how remote the community they visited, nor how poor communications, scoured the Somali countryside to carry out their missions of enlightenment. <laughs> For the campaign, the entire nation was mobilized. Its every resource, both human and material, were drawn upon. At the end of the first six-month phase, its supporters and the nation's leaders turned out to greet the returning students who had played so large a part in its obvious success. <laughs> It was time to acknowledge that this was also the first time the nation had benefited from the collective energy of its young people, of its students, who would be among its leaders tomorrow. And in thanksgiving for this fact, great festivals of youth were held throughout the country. In Mogadishu, President Siad himself attended these festivals, presenting medals and scrolls to all who had distinguished themselves over the grueling half-year. With the campaign, the Somali people had reached a peak of national unity. Its benefits seen, progressive forces throughout the country stood ready to defend the gains of the revolution. Students now, with teachers accepted as active participants in their country's struggle, the nation's youth celebrated with colorful displays of their achievements and their future hopes. <laughs> As we have already seen, former generations of Somali students had to learn of the world through foreign languages and cultures. Today, they are taught up to the secondary level, at least in Somali. With government prompting, the Somali alphabet was agreed in 1973, enabling the first Somali books to be published for use in primary, intermediate, and secondary education. At last, the young could learn of and take pride in the culture and history of their own country. The revolution had pledged equality for women also. No longer suppressed by convention, girls and women today are given equal rights in education and the national life. They rank, in fact, among the leaders of the new society. For these future mothers of the nation, domestic science and needlework are new additions to the syllabus. <laughs> I'm not a 
And the educated woman is important for another equally fundamental reason. As the center of family life, without encouragement from her, tomorrow's children will grow and learn more slowly. Any country without a national university will have problems in carrying out development projects on its own. It just won't have the skilled technicians. Accepting this as self-evident, an early task of the revolution was to endow a first-class university with faculties chosen to meet the country's specific needs. And their doing so bore fruit. Many of Somalia University's graduates today have already played leading parts in countless development projects of national importance. Elections in 64 and 69 had caught the people confused and politically innocent. Now, special orientation centers were built where they could learn their basic responsibility towards society at large. The centers stressed the value of national unity. Above all, they worked to eradicate ancient clan divisions and feuds. The centers are working. People of all kinds gather here to discuss their problems, seeking and offering solutions on the basis of each other's experience. But they are not just political forums. Despite their title, they are used also as local sports grounds for the young, places where healthy minds can grow in healthy bodies. And whoever they be, every person who comes to a center will find a platform on which to express his or her views. Universally adopted, they have become the community centers of the nation. <laughs>